You ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first and foremost, what do you think of the new court and the new setup at the West Coast Conference Tournament? Um, I really didn't notice the court that much. Last time I watched the games, I really didn't pay much attention to it. I was watching the players, I guess, but it looks like it's a nice floor and players didn't complain about it. You could tell that they liked the floor a lot better. So, um, you know, as a player myself, I, I didn't worry about the floor. I worried more about the basketball and shooting and the rims. So that's probably what, what I looked at. So I don't look at the floor. <laughs> Fair enough. Jody, how long does it take a shooter, an elite shooter like yourself, to acclimate to a new backdrop and a new court and a new setting? Well, shooters are really particular of things that they notice on the court. So lighting, the floor, the rims, um, kind of the background, um, and even the, the, the probably the basketball is the most important thing. Um, like when I used to play, I wouldn't dribble it, I'd spin it to make sure the ball was, was right. Uh, just getting that feel, and there's there's gyms that you feel more comfortable uh, shooting the ball here. I think last year, Brenna shot the ball really well here in this tournament, so sometimes that that feeling of knowing you shot well in that gym really helps you. But it's but it's a lot of that and just getting getting confidence really, you know, in yourself. The Marriott Center is a little bit different. The lighting is by far the best. And so that adjustment sometimes coming to a gym that's not as well lit can take your shot off just a hair, so it's, it's tough. You're still the best shooter at the Orleans, though, right, on this team? <laughs> I'm the best shooter on this team right now. Lee thinks he is, but not really. It's, it's probably me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> What's the mentality of your team right now as the three seed in a very unique conference tournament setup? Well, you know, of course you'd like to be the number one seed and, and have the easy way to the semifinals, but sometimes the season goes and you lose a couple of games that could have gone your way, and that kind of happened against us this year. I, I think we know as a team that there's the only team we didn't beat was Gonzaga, and we played them both times really well. Uh, we know we can beat anybody on any given night if we come out and play our game. The negative part of it is is playing three games in four days if you get that far. Um, but we, we're, we're looking at one game at a time. We got to take care of Pepperdine. And then we win that game and then worry about the next one. So um, it really doesn't make a difference if you come out and play. you you, you got to beat somebody anyway. And uh, it, this team's been there, and hopefully we can, you know, really play our, our best time right now, our best game. You mentioned the negative there, but what's the positive part of having only seven days off compared to the BYU men and in your situation last year where you had nine days off before you played? I think what happens is you get in a rhythm as a team with practice, with games, with routine, and that kind of changes it. it. It changes when you don't play. You probably saw a lot of the all-star break when all these guys took breaks for a week and they came back and tried to play, how some of them were out of sync, and that's that's the concern you have as a coach. Um, I've done it enough, so I've kind of been able to do things like make the team play practice a little bit harder, make it more game situation, um, do those kind of things, but it does it does affect you a little bit, and that's where experience comes in. I think and really helps. What's the key to success in a conference tournament format? Because your teams have historically down here in the WCC enjoyed great success. Well, one of them is play good enough to win. Don't play your best game the first game. Secondly, take advantage of what mismatches you have in the tournament, where you can really emphasize that. And I think the third is just go out and play with a lot of confidence and play with, with urgency and knowing that this is you lose you're you're done, you win you when you move on and the exciting part of it is winning and and, and really doing that, and uh, but every team, that's the hard part. Every team has a chance and that's what the excitement part of, of tournament basketball is is any team can come in, and play their best game and you play your worst and then you're out. Where the NBA, it's seven game series, so you you play a bad game, you just make it up. But it's not that way in March Madness. I think that's why this is the greatest tournament, you know, ever probably. Yeah, the finality of it brings a different dynamic to yeah. it. If you win or your your season might be over. Um, you said something about not playing your best game the first game. So hypothetically, let's say you're making seventy percent of your yeah. shots. 
What do you do to not continue that so that you can save some for a later game? Well, you you, you, you hope that you, you do it for a while, but not like you don't want to come out and, and shoot all your bullets at once and, and really do it. As a coach, you you want your team to come out and play good. It's it's hard to play back-to-back -back great games. And that's why when you have depth and you have people that can score, like last year with us, you know, one game Paisley went off and and Shaley played really well. And the next night was Brennan. And Paisley had a great tournament last year. She played two really really good games. We hope that we got some inside presence this year with Sarah and Jasmine and Shalay. And hopefully Smither can come in and give us a lift like she did during the season. And, and Paisley and Brenna play the consistent basketball that they've they played. Probably the one of the big factors is going to be how well Jasmine plays for us and how well Maria plays for us. If those two play up to par, then um, I think Paisley and Brenna have proven most of the year that they're going to score by taking a number of shots. But if those guys can can really do it, then it's going to make a big difference. So if, pa team. if Paisley or Brenna makes their first four shots, I'm going to need you to pull one of them out and just <laughs> let them settle down. I probably won't do that. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, they're used to scoring. And there's a big thing to that. When a player's used to scoring and they go through the runs, it, it doesn't. it's not as effective. It's when the kid who hasn't scored as much comes in and has a game of her life, That's it's hard to do it back to back. And it's happened. Um, I, you know, I've, I have seen it with some of my teams where a certain player comes in and plays probably their their best game. And, and y you know, I mean, right now our, our team's excited to play. We're ready to go. We've, we've kind of waited a little bit long, and so hopefully we'll be ready to go. How's the health of your team at this point in the year? Probably as healthy as we've been. Um, you know, Paisley had an ankle, and uh, Jasmine was hurt, and... You know, surprisingly, Sarah's been pretty healthy this year. Uh, Brenna has that not had too much, you know, problem with it. Um, we've had a couple of guys coming off the bench that've had some injuries a little bit, but we're probably the most healthy we've been right, you know, right now. Why is Pepperdine a tough matchup for BYU? They have the best point guard in the league, I think, where she can, can create so much. They have mismatches through their bigs; they're all shooters, and so that pulls. Sarah and it pulls Chalet out. Um, they're very, they, they run their stuff. They run a pick and roll and they just keep running it until you finally make a mistake. And, you know, they, they've, they're, they're streaky sometimes offensively where they, when they shoot the ball really well from the three, it's, it's really hard. Now, last time we played them at our place, they hit 10 threes. And that's probably the most they hit probably in our conference at that time. So hopefully they won't shoot that well. In this, in this tournament. Okay, let's finish with uh, our traditional BYU Sports Nation Karma Exchange, uh, both for the games down here and for the shooting contest that we will set up between you and Lee Kamard at some point. <laughs> and make sure you give me enough notice so I can at least warm up a little bit. <laughs> you know, um, this, has been a, this has been a fun thing for us, this tournament. Like you've mentioned, my girls have enjoyed playing this and they, they, they want to win and they know that there's a lot on the line, but Players and people seem to do better when things are tougher and things that mean something. And I so I, so I really hope that we come out and, and play our game during this weekend. Good luck against Pepperdine and through the tournament, Coach. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Spencer.